tell everybody what happened. You're really gonna make me do this. <laughs> okay, because you were so sassy the other day. Yeah, yeah, you need to All do right, this. So the first day we got here, we got a parking ticket for the deck. And when we went to leave, I had it in my wallet, but I couldn't find it. I decided to park the car because I thought I had to go back up to the hotel to find it. And what I tell you, where was it? I said, you mixed that parking ticket in with probably your money. You didn't put it in the spot you said you were gonna put it in. That was true. Where'd you find it? In between my cash. Okay, so when we exited the garage and came back in, you got a new parking ticket. And I said to you, James, did you put that parking ticket in a safe spot? And your answer immediately was? No, I didn't. I was being a smart ass about it. And what happened? I didn't keep it in a safe spot. We're gonna to have to pay the maximum. You lost the ticket, just say get it. Our, uh, I, lo I lost it. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hey listeners, ever wonder what it would be like to sell everything and travel the country at the tender age of 50? Well, with our last kid off to college and the ability to now work remotely, we've decided to do just that. So we're selling the house, loading up the dog, and hitting every city from California to Florida. We're scouring the country for a new place to call home and dragging you into every restaurant, Airbnb, and tourist trap we encounter along the way. This is the Skip Town All-Stars Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Skip Town All-Stars Podcast. Hi. Hi. Greetings from West Seattle. Yay. I Red know, Hawks. I don't know why I'm pointing to this because it's in Capitol Hill, but it's a different, <laughs> it's a different area of town. I know. I nobody can see it who's listening. Everybody's like, what? Uh, I'm pointing to my Seattle University Red Hawks cap. Uh, as you know, if you listened to our last episode, our daughter Ellie was going off to school there. Uh, mission accomplished. She's in a dorm. We are still here, so we'll get to see her one more night tonight. We're very excited, but it's been a whirlwind. When you last caught up with us, we were about to leave a grungy little motel. Nothing but the best for my family, as I said before, <laughs> in rural Oregon. Uh, the people were really nice. It was a great town, hardworking town, blue collar folks. Uh, and we got on the road and made our way up beautiful drive through Oregon. Gorgeous, as, as you would expect. Yeah, from Eugene, mm -hmm. through Portland, and up to Seattle. We saw the fog roll in. Yeah, It was we did. gorgeous. Um, really quick, I just wanna say, for any of you that are, you know, you're obviously listening to us, and we're talking about images, I share all of this on our Instagram. So we oh, have yeah. a Skip Towns All-Star Instagram. Uh, James has his own Skip Town James, and I have my own Skip Town Denise. Uh, James will put it here uh, in the- I Show call, notes. I call it liner notes. I have no idea. Yeah, but in any case- it's fine. It's all the same. Everybody knows what you're talking about. I, I love to post our adventures, and like I literally have a photo of the fog rolling in. It's so pretty. We hardly ever get to see fog in LA. So if you're in an area where you see fog all the time, it doesn't mean anything to you, but we're driving and we saw it rolling in through the trees. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was for sure. And I felt on our way up that because we had sort of such a lackluster stay in Oregon that I would treat the girls, Ellie and Denise, to uh, a very nice place for a few evenings. And I found this gem on booking.com. Uh, it is called the Lodge at St. Edwards Park. State Park. State Park. And uh, it is sort of on the northeastern side of the city of Seattle and uh, in an area called Kenmore, I believe. Yep. Uh, the accommodations were fantastic. I really wish there was a camera in our car because as I'm winding down this road, in the middle of nowhere in the forest thinking where the hell is he taking us once again literally i was like oh, <laughs> the last my. time we went down a forest it was not very good, i was like not a very good experience i literally was like what hell hole is he taking us to <laughs> and then it was like out of a movie the trees cleared the car went over a bridge and there was the torches oh the torches and twinkle lights of the hotel windows like it looked, it was something out of a movie. It's an old seminary that they converted a $56 million rehab. Yeah. 
you can just imagine when I say seminary, the stone building this hotel was made out of and um, just it looked like something I, I've never been to like Italy, but it looked like something that would be on acres and acres of land in like the far reaches of an Italian, um, you know, uh, vineyard or something like that. I can't, yeah. I, like, does that make sense? Am I making yeah, I sense? Mean, Am me, I painting the picture? To me coming up on it, it, it I wouldn't say it was medieval. It was probably like sort of uh, maybe late Victorian yeah, sort of I literally building. yelled in the car. I go, oh my God, oh my God. And he's like, what, what? I'm like, look at this place you booked. It was gorgeous. Yeah. It really was. It was, uh, again, it's called The Lodge and it's in St. Edward uh, State Park, but the land is owned by the state. So the surrounding land. Yes. Yeah. So, so. unfortunately, like the first night we were there, I mean, there was, they were doing some work in the park, so we had to hear it. But honestly, the rooms were phenomenal. It is pricey. I would say if you can do it for one night, you know, two would be lovely. But gosh, just to have that experience of of being in the middle of a state park, like you wake up and it's just trees and beautiful landscape all around. Yeah. And even though it had been done, redone recently, uh, you would expect more of a modern feel, but actually they no, really they paid it. attention to keeping some of the classic <laughs> elements there. It was a fantastic hotel. When we got into the room, it had an classic, aged feel, a classic yes. feel. That's the, the way to say it. Yeah, it was a very, um, the decor was very um, American classic, yeah. uh, like four post beds, that kind of thing. Beautiful carpeting. The wallpapers were just gorgeous. Everything they had done, they did not miss a detail. Yeah. So in that $56 million renovation, um, the light fixtures, just everything was, nothing was left to chance. The library was great too. Um, it was just, you know, a, a room where if you had your family there, you could go in there. They had all sorts of, like they had the wooden Monopoly games. They had the yes. wooden Clue games. Yeah, so, it was really, really cool. Yeah, they spent a lot of money and, and time on detail. Uh, Very the, family-friendly hotel. Yeah, so anyway, I felt like you guys deserved that. Thank uh, you. We were was, so happy. <laughs> you deserved it so much, you tried to get an extra night. and We uh, did. We'll I tried about, to extend we'll, that stay. It looked like it was going to happen, and then the front desk guy basically called me back and said, yeah, no. Uh, you got to go. You got to get out. And so, uh, and it was already 11 a.m. So there was a bit of a scramble because we were not only homeless all of a sudden, but we also had to check in our daughter to her dorm that day. Yeah. And so on the way into the city, I found a great hotel, Hotel Theodore, and Denise got on the phone with them. And what happened there? Oh, well, you know, if you travel, and by the way, as I'm talking, if you're hearing loud banging, we are in currently an Airbnb with the thinnest walls ever, and yeah. the second floor is- And the cleaning crew upstairs on the other unit. Yeah. And so if you hear the banging, that's what that is. You might even hear the vacuum soon, um, but good to know that they're cleaning. So yeah. our place is pretty spotless. It makes me feel better. I know. Okay. So we get to where well, we're headed to Seattle, and we have about five hours of- um, nowhere <laughs> no economy. literally we have five nowhere. hours of van time yeah with a dog with only a 45 minute drive so if you've ever traveled you know that um hotels are pretty strict um you're you can check in at three o'clock but not 259 or you can check in yeah. at four o'clock but not 359 and you better be out at 11 a.m on the dot so um it's kind of a bummer really you very rarely get any leeway you can beg and you can cry and they still say sorry uh but I called, thought, what the heck, I'll give it a chance and just, you know, see if we could check in early. The girl at the front desk at the hotel theater was fantastic. She let us check in at one o'clock and didn't even charge us. Those four hours that she gave us just made the difference. And sometimes it, it is the, you know, I always say if a person woke up on the wrong side of the bed as, you know, a service provider, whether it be the girl at a front desk of, of a hotel or a car rental guy or, um, you know, your, your mechanic. Yeah. Boy, if, if they didn't get a good night's sleep or their wife was nasty to them trouble. or their husband. That's yeah. an extra 400 bucks right there. Exactly. So she got a good night's sleep and she was really nice to us. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, an hour or two later, we were able to drop off Ellie at her dorm. And man, all of a sudden that dog had all kinds of room in the van, which was great. She did. Yeah. So... Uh, so we got checked in there. Um, speaking of the dog, it was not the most amazing stay, but it had nothing to do with the hotel. Uh, you know, our dog. Our dogs have an ass problems. 
<laughs> That's one way to put it. Our whole trip has revolved around her bowel movements. It's really been challenging. Yeah. I did not expect that. She's usually such an easygoing gal. No, not this trip. And yeah. she's been really angry and she's been pooping yeah. in places um, like like inside the hotels, which yeah. thank God they're pet friendly. And thank goodness that like we've been, we've been standing right there while yeah, she's, she's been had, pooped she's in had, front of us. So had, we've been yeah, able to clean it up quickly. She's had two accidents for sure. I would equate it to basically that time you took granny to Vegas and she got wasted <laughs> and wanted to smoke cigarettes and gamble all night. And you were exhausted from the drive and one of, and you had to do rotations in, yep. on keeping eyes on granny and she gets lost somewhere inside the casino yeah, the uh, minute yeah. the dog's paws hit the ground in the middle of the night, I'm jumping up out of bed because I'm like, she has to go out. She has to go out. It's it's le- it is for sure watching Granny in yeah. Vegas. It's yeah. really been tiring. And when I say tiring, I'm exhausted by three o'clock. And you're not I, even the one taking her out. I know it's true. It's waking you up. I have to get up to wake you up. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. Um, so the dog's been hard. And um, the one thing that we've learned about the dog is that uh, Airbnbs are the best for her. Yeah. Um, she's not a city dog. She was raised in Los Angeles, but we had a backyard and she had full reign of that backyard. So making this dog take a walk um, through the city of Seattle and, and it's, forcing her to go to the bathroom on no grass. It's all concrete. It's not jungle like downtown LA, but it's it's all concrete. There's and, no grass. And yeah, it, there you are asked, very few patches. Yeah, you asked the hotel like what the closest park was, and I think he said a mile. A mile. So yeah. that's too far to walk. I mean, look, in some cases, she had just made it out of the lobby door and was peeing on the cement because she had held it for so long. And it wasn't because we were making her hold it. Yeah, we she, tried. It wasn't for not trying. No, she just was, I think she was, she's nervous. She has anxiety. By the time we made it to- She did it in a crosswalk. I mean- <laughs> Oh my God, I forgot about that. She stopped the squat in a crosswalk and it was like uh, maybe a Sunday morning at 6 a.m. How many seconds were left across? Oh, uh, like 10. And you know, I had the little baggie that you have to pull out and it's like the thing wouldn't separate. Oh my God. I started freaking out. I turned into her. I almost went in the crosswalk myself. There was literally a Prius like pointed right at me. I felt like a matador. I was like trying to get my cape together before the bull turned charge me and the dog's just standing there and i was like i know she did that on purpose she was like take that oh totally she's been so angry with us at you know uprooting her in her in her old age i know she thought you know she thought for sure she was just gonna spend the rest of her time in a cozy (laughs) la in in a cozy valley bed and you know but yeah so the dog has been um challenging uh so we've learned it's taken us two weeks that we have to stop with the hotel stays and get an Airbnb and allow her to have um, a backyard. She has been so happy. It's the first time I've seen her smile. I know. (laughs) And it seems like a no brainer. Like everybody's like, yeah, well, of course a dog needs a yard dummies. But uh, the thing you have to keep in mind is we wanted to remain proximal to our daughter. We have limited time to see her in between her practices with her team. And so we just wanted to be available to her. It's more of a headache. Yeah, ultimately we threw Ellie overboard and kept the dog and came out to... (laughs) Came out to the suburbs oh of West Seattle just to like it's true. Roxy have an took, Airbnb. Roxy yeah. took precedent. She yeah, did. We said, she see did. you, Ellie. I couldn't dog, take it anymore. I was like, Ellie. Won't. Like, even yesterday. Uh, the dog won't shit, Ellie. We got to go. Even yesterday, <laughs> Ellie had like a three hour break. And I'm like, I'm sorry, we're too far away. It takes 45 <laughs> minutes to get there from here. The bridge is closed. There's a detour. I made all these excuses. And, and I was all like, the dogs so, in the backyard. Yeah, and the dog baby. just rolling around in the grass. <laughs> and so I'm like, screw oh this dog, man. Screw this dog. But anyway, I love her. She's my girl. So (laughs) we're in West Seattle now. So we moved out of the Hotel Theodore, got an Airbnb in West Seattle. Um, Let's talk a little bit about Seattle. So um, we have been here before only one day. And when I say here, I mean um, Pike's Place Market in Fremont. Pike Place. What'd I say? It's you still, I think you had the S. Oh, okay. It's not apostrophe S or plural. It's just... Pike. Okay. So two years ago, we came to Pike Place Market for a day, and then we came back to the Fremont area for Can I interject day. for a second? Uh, this is a theme with Denise. She just <laughs> butchers the it. names of locations. So- um, I want to say Pike. It's like Peak. it's like you're doing a travel log, but you don't know any of the names of the place. Like if if someone I'm Google Grandma it, in Vegas, you I'm Grandma be, in Vegas. You are. It's like you don't know anywhere that you're going. All right, going okay. back. We went to Fremont. 
And Pike, uh, Pike Place Market two years ago, but we only came for the day. So uh, actually being in the city in a hotel for almost five days is quite different. Uh, spending the night, walking around, really seeing the city for um, for more than just a few hours uh, allowed us to kind of take it in. So I would say the first thing for me that I noticed right away about this city is that everyone colors their hair. And I'm not talking like brown to blonde, like purple and red. Yeah. Like they really go out and color their hair. And we're not talking 20 somethings. You could see uh, women in suits with purple hair. You could see men in three piece suits with green hair. I, I just, it was really, really surprising. I don't know. We talked about this a little bit, but I think Maybe it's, you know, a lot of them work in tech where that makes sense. they want a certain crisp sort of metropolitan look, but at the same time, the hair thing allows them to express their individuality it's a little pretty bit. Cool. I'm just guessing. I don't know. But I mean, like you see a guy, a, like you'll see like a really stylish like suit with good shoes and he's got green hair. It's really cool, actually. I yeah. I love it. It's a way that they're expressing themselves. Seattle right. goes for it, man. I like that. <laughs> they I like really, that. I was they, like, all right, these people are not playing around when it comes to just being themselves. That's great. That's a great trait. It is true. Yeah. They, they, they don't play around. Um, would I suggest Seattle as a city to visit? I would. It is expensive though. And that's one thing that um, we did not anticipate being here for only a few hours last time. Uh, when you go to a tourist places like, yeah, you're you know, expected. yeah, like um, Pike Place, you expect some, it to be pricier. But now we've been pretty much um, all around Seattle in a sense, meaning that we're in West Seattle now. We actually stayed in Kenmore area of uh, Southeast Seattle, I believe that yeah. was. So Every place is expensive. If you're going to come to this city, just have money. I bought a dozen cupcakes yesterday and they were $52. That's yeah. very pricey. And if I mean, you're- it's a boutique bakery, obviously, but- No. No? It has chains all over. And oh, really? it's the common it's the common cupcake oh, holy place. Holy moly, they were really dry. I mean, for, <laughs> for $52 too. And if you're in middle America right now, you're going, what? Um, But yeah, that's- that was the price for a dozen cupcakes. I think that's expensive. That's LA prices to me. Um, food here at restaurants are expensive. Sandwiches are 15 to $18. So for me, this is not a place that I would want to buy a home. I left a city like this and I'm not interested in going back to a city that is so expensive. It's much different than LA in the sense that it's prettier. You see the water wherever you go. Um, not as much homeless. The city is a lot cleaner than Los Angeles. There's yeah. obviously a lot more public transportation. Oh, public Way transportation more. is all electric. It's yeah. incredible. Electric buses. Yeah, they're very um progressive, so they have that going for them. There are many things about this city which James and I will discuss that we both really enjoyed. Um, I just can't do it because it's too expensive. So for me, I'm out. Yeah. I mean, well, I think so. The outlying areas, like where we are now is a quaint little town. But it's still expensive. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it is. It's expensive. I mean, I imagine if you lived a half an hour outside of the city, I got it the would cupcakes in this quaint little town that were $52. I know, but this is still like we're in West Seattle. So we're still in Seattle. You okay, know? but so Kenmore I think was went, expensive. Uh, yeah, Kenmore was expensive. I mean, so it's, stop. it's, it's definitely. I know. We didn't save any money by leaving Los Angeles to come here in terms of eating and dining I think and if stuff, we but. were going to go inland more, like if you're going to go really deep into Washington, yeah. then it might be cheaper. I'd have to look into it, but I'm just saying I would that think it would be. I'm out. As beautiful as Seattle is and beautiful as this neighborhood is and everything is quaint about it, I'm not paying a million dollars for a little house again. Like that's insane. Yeah. No, uh, we would not be able to buy a house here because- nope it would be basically getting ourselves into the same situation, almost as bad traffic. Yeah. I mean, so the parking here is great. I have to tell you, they have a lot of um, public parking lots. Yeah. So that's something that Los Angeles doesn't offer. Uh, so being here in the city, it is Well, easy. Los Angeles has a lot of public parking lots, but there's usually a guy standing there and they're usually full. I mean, we haven't really had a problem finding oh, a parking well, lot here. I don't know. And most of it no. is governed by app. Okay, look. In Sherman Oaks, you cannot find parking. It is so hard. And there's no That's parking, true. public parking spots in Sherman Oaks. There so are spots, yeah. Where I mean, there are places where it's, you forget it, you're locked out. There are no public parking spots. You're okay. talking Valley. I thought you were talking like Hollywood, No, LA, I'm talking about that. Los Angeles. 
anywhere. Santa Monica. You can't park in Santa Monica. Here in Seattle, when I went to go get the cupcakes in West Seattle, I went to a parking structure. There was no parking on the streets, but they have parking lots. So they offer that everywhere in the city. And that is really great. Like I find that to be very easy to manage uh, when you're driving because traffic is hard. Parking on streets is, is very difficult, but when you have easy lots to pull into, that's awesome. So props to Seattle for allowing drivers a place to park. Yeah, there were plenty of, uh, we were staying not too far from the theater where they're showing, where Hamilton is playing. Yeah. And there were plenty of parking lots around that place. It seemed when people were getting in and out of there, everybody had a place to go and it wasn't super stressful. I don't know. The only thing for me is, uh, so we went to the Fremont, Fremont area last night. Yeah. That's where we had um, Thai dinner. Yeah. So we had Thai food there. Can we talk real quick? I'm so sorry about the food here. Like you can get any, any kind of um, nationality of food, anything. So again, like big thumbs up to Seattle for any kind of food you want. If you're craving, if you're craving Ethiopian food, well, hot damn. There's an Ethiopian place right down the street. <laughs> well, I like Chilean. Okay. Let me get that for yeah. you. <laughs> so anyway, so last night we did Thai. Yeah. Uh, it's one of our favorite spots. It's called, I get it mixed Kinley. up. Ken Lin or Ken Lin. Lin Ken. No, like it. it's Ken, Ken Lin. The tag is Thai Night Bites. It's a great place. Yes. Our daughter loves it. I ordered the wrong thing off the menu last night. I'm not going to lie. I could have picked something more savory, but not uh, me, not me. Everybody else picked what they wanted and I just wanted to be different. So I kind of screwed myself there a little bit, but uh, the appetizers were amazing. We, we, we were there. We just stumbled on it. Um, Two years ago. Yeah. During the pandemic. And we it was visiting. still a great experience. It's Thai fusion food. And it was actually, I mean, we took six people out. It cost 250 bucks for the dinner with the with Ellie and her teammates. I so, think that was the first reasonable meal we've had here. Probably. Yeah. I think there are gems. And I think if you're a local, you're going to find them. Um, I also think, you know, being in the city uh, and, you know, for us just wanting to try like, oh, here's this. Italian place where it, you know, it, it's like sucked th- four stars or whatever. <laughs> and we went there. It was there. expensive and it sucked. Horrible service, mediocre food. I forget the name of it, but who cares? Cinque or something like oh, okay. that. Okay. I, I guess we can list it later that yeah. don't go. And I just, I've noticed this phenomenon with oh. Seattle drivers yeah, where like, this is good. They, they literally like come up on you from behind, like at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> it's true. So I was trying to park and I found a spot and this guy just pulled like right where I need to swerve the car to get into the parking space. Did he take your spot? No, he did not even take my spot. Finally, I just gave up. It, I, it happened twice. Like yeah. I was just like, does anybody, do you guys know how to city here when it comes to <laughs> parallel parking like you give the dude in front of you who's got his blinker and his reverse lights on like he's parking so just camp out for a second yeah and they um, don't do that here it was especially problematic because you know for as smooth our little rental van is uh on the freeway and all that other stuff it's really weird because when you try and maneuver it into a parking spot all of a sudden it feels like a frozen foods truck (laughs) that you're trying to like have you noticed this? It's because huge, it takes up James. Well, it's boxy. So it takes up every corner of the space yeah, that you're going I into. And I'm really good at parallel parking. I had an SUV. This van is like a boat. Fremont's a little congested, but it's a super fun area. It reminds me a little bit of like Los Angeles, uh, like Los Feliz. It is. Yes. Or that area. Agreed. Or maybe like Venice back when it was clean. And the Fremont Troll is there. So that's a tourist uh, attraction. It's an art exhibit. Bit. I don't think I call it an art. It's art. What do you call it? An art when it's installation. installation. That's it. But overall, I mean, it's a pretty walkable city for, you know, especially for our daughter. There's 12th Avenue with it's just a huge stretch of restaurants and, uh, you know, sort of different ethnic foods for all the students who go to Seattle U or all the people who live in that Capitol Hill area. Um, it's true. Um, the um, uh, We have friends whose daughter attends Seattle University right now. She's going to be a sophomore. And uh, sh- the one thing she said was, I just walk everywhere. And it really is quite fantastic for these young kids that yeah. are attending the university. Whole Foods is right there. Um, Trader Joe's is a little bit further of a walk. But 12th Avenue has restaurants, 
boutiques. They can get their hair cut. It has everything. Yeah. I know. These kids nowadays are so lucky. I had a pizza joint and like, you know, a hoagie place. You can have a moment. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, okay. So we are in uh, West Seattle, which we've mentioned, um, a neighborhood town, neighborhoods, neighborhood area. Um, all right. So we came here because of the dog. We needed a backyard. Yeah. But I want to ask you, if we didn't have the dog with us, where would you, where, where, what area of the city so far that we visited, where would you prefer to be? I do like the suburbs and I felt like I needed them in this instance, but um, I do like the hustle and bustle of Seattle. I liked it when Ellie and I came to visit okay. for her campus visit. I like staying in the middle. I think it's going to be my last taste of it for a while because when we get to Salt Lake City, uh, there's some of that, but it's not nearly to the same degree. Yeah, um, I would definitely say that when we travel... He is more of the city person for sure. I'm sick of the city. I was born and raised in a city. I've lived in Los Angeles for so many years. I I am done. Like, And I don't even think that he realizes every hotel he picks, no matter where we go, it's always in the city or near a city. And I am the complete opposite. I'm like, let's stay out here. I just want to relax. I don't want to hear buses. I don't want to hear people honking horns. Um, so... You know, um, for me, I love being right here in uh, in the West Seattle area. I'm glad that you needed a break because I really did not want to <laughs> tell you that I need to get the hell out of the city. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I think for me, it's extremes. Like I can do the rural thing. I can be on a mountain. I can be in a lake or what have you. And just one sort of little town market on the corner kind of thing. Get everything you need, stock up, and then go hang at whatever place you're staying at. Uh, or I like being in the city to me, uh, generally speaking, the suburbs, it, it's kind of like where we lived, you know, uh, if, if you wanted Mexican food, you had to drive a mile and a half or, you know, you could certainly walk it, but are you talking about where you live? What are you talking about? When we lived in LA, it no, was like, Mexican food was right down the corner. No, I know, but I hated that place. So, okay. uh, where did, I, I where did like we have that the, place. a mile and a half away? Melody's was only like. Yeah, but I'm not going to walk there. You know what I mean? Okay, it's so like, what are you you're saying? not going to walk in 100 degree weather. Okay, so what are you saying? With your Mexican food so you to come want home. Um, no, what I'm saying is like if we're staying at, like so when we stayed in the suburbs of Chicago, you got to drive two miles to get a sandwich, you know? And for me, it's like if I'm going to do that, I would rather stay in a place where I can walk three, oh, four blocks okay, and get a it. sandwich. Got it. Okay. Then get in the car. I'm fine. Slept we'll get down in the car. there. I'm, just, I'm yeah, I'm fine. I don't like that. Okay. So I'm a little b- when it comes to that, I guess. So. <laughs> you are. All right. Let's talk about our favorites of Seattle and our not so favorites. So let's start with our favorites. Oh, so we're just start with our yeah, favorites. start with your favorites right, and then well, we'll go to not. Favorites. We already talked ad nauseum about the lodge and the park, so Fine. that was one of mine. Okay. Um, my mm-hmm. other favorite is just how accessible you, you can be whimsical about your food choices here, and there's something mm-hmm. within probably a mile radius of wherever you're staying. I like that in the city limits. I like seeing water all the time, wherever you're driving or walking, it's to look over and there's the Harbor is fantastic. It's that gives the city its own feel, uh, especially when you're coming, uh, North up the five to the Southern side of the city. And then you see, you know, the football stadium, the landing, the edges of Pike place, all those things that, and then the space needle, obviously, but, uh, you're just like, damn, this is a cool town. So I think those for me are probably my three favorites. Okay. Um, let me tell you my favorites. So I'll give a couple favorites too. Um, I like that the public transportation is electrical. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Like that's something different to see in a city. Uh, I like that. Um, well, we talked about parking. So that one, I just, I have to see, hold on. Cause I actually wrote down my favorites. So, um, oh, you made a list. I did. Oh, you're prepared this week. Okay. Seriously. This one's a good one. I'm not prepared. This one's a good one. Recycling. And they don't just recycle. They take it to the next level. They have a recycling bin for, bin for cardboard, like cardboard. So 
they really are trying to, uh, uh, you know, um, inspire or encourage people to throw their things in the proper places. So I sure. love the fact that they are very, very, um, responsible about their cycling, recycling. Uh, I like the fact that they're progressive. So, um, my not so favorite it's expensive. Um, there is uh, a lot of traffic. Uh, there is homelessness. And although it's not as much as Los Angeles, it's still very prevalent. And I saw a woman going to the bathroom in a parking lot in the middle of the city. And that is upsetting on so many levels. Um, I don't care that I saw it. I feel bad that, that I had to see that. That was like just terrible. Um, that a human being had to go to the bathroom in a public spot in the middle of the city. Um, so I don't know as progressive as this city is what's happening. Why are people defecating in the street? Uh, the, uh, one other thing that I want to mention that, um, <laughs> that kind of is, uh, my not so favorites, they don't have air conditioning. Like the hotels may have it, but there's no air conditioning. We don't have air conditioning in our, in our Airbnb. A lot of apartments and homes don't have air conditioning because why would you need it? You're in Washington. It's cool, you know, 10 months out of the year, but who it's been really hot here yeah. and we have been sweating and, um, yeah. yeah, it's kind of weird walking into a place that doesn't have air conditioning, including restaurants. All right. Yeah. What's your miss uh, or misses? My missus, uh, we went to a really bad Italian restaurant in my view. The service was horrible. Uh, and so that was, I mentioned it briefly earlier. I don't know. I, I don't want to get into the habit of rating and, and, no, and doing we're all not this. Like food but I'm just going to say the name of the place is Cinque Terra. Don't <laughs> go there. It. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. Oh my so, God. <laughs> do not go there. The bartender sucked. Uh, so that brings up my second thing. So I've tried two martinis since I've been here. Martinis, as anybody knows who drinks them, is pretty much just straight liquor. It seems and, so easy. I'm not a drinker, but it's like, don't you just shake, shake it, it up in yeah. a like, it's thing? It's like two shots of this or that and a little vermouth and a couple olives and you're good. I've had the worst martinis in Seattle What ever. makes it bad? You have to uh, explain. They were both watered down and they were both super tiny and they were both super expensive. So, Oh, um, that's a trifecta. Yeah, it was a trifecta of suck. So anyway, those are probably my two. And then I already mentioned the drivers again. So okay. this is the third time I brought them up. No, that let's was not really talk about them anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and We're I, all good I, with that. I do agree with you, though, that traffic in traffic is terrible traffic here. compared to L.A. is only incrementally better here. And oh, once in, you're on. And the, when you use the word incrementally, you're right, because it is almost as bad as Los Angeles traffic. There are a lot more single lane roads here, for sure. And I think that's just the nature of how the city was built on all these hills. So understood, there's an infrastructure there that you can't escape, you can't get around. Um, but for me, uh, I have noticed, like you look at it on the map and you'll be like, it's eight miles. And then all of a sudden, instead of being 45 minutes, it's only 35 minutes here in Seattle, at least. So that's an improvement. Um, I really like the area. I'm super happy my kid is coming here because uh, I enjoy walking around the city. I think it's a cool town with cool people. Agreed. Uh, just not a place I could afford to live. I just want to want to live there. I hate when people say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I really hate when, like LA is a great place, but I wouldn't want to live there. Uh, but, and, I'm sorry. And yet we did. I so know. I just said we, that. We could totally live in Seattle, but we would for there. It would be. It would make zero sense to sell an overpriced house in LA to come buy an, an overpriced, overpriced house in, in Seattle. Seattle and sit in almost traffic. the same traffic and pay, you know, the going, same for a sandwich. Going back to, I think the omelets here are $13 instead of $18, maybe some We're places. Out. Yeah. Out. Yeah. So getting closer, but not there. Everybody who's listening knows we came here to move our kid in. And this is really the start of our journey. So when we say goodbye to her tonight, and I'm done, you know, you never cry when we say goodbye to oh the God, kids. I actually- You I, don't miss them. <laughs> you don't. You're oh heartless. God, stop. You're cruel. Oh my God. I can't believe it's taken you this long to actually ask me that. And none of the kids ever talk about it either. I don't cry. I don't. <laughs> I don't know why. I need oh to Oh my God. I get a, a little therapist. misty. I get a little misty. I mean, you know, 
With Parker, it was easy because you guys were arguing all day and I just gave her a hug and I was crying more because it was a horrible day than it was anything. But, uh, you know, with Mia, I got super sad and I was in a funk for a little while after that. I'm sure with Ellie, it'll be the same. So I just, you know, for me, they're my little girls. I'm, oh, they're I'm my girl- little girls too. Oh, I know. But I'm a girl dad and it's like I invested so much, like oh. literally invested so much okay. in them. And so it's like, the minute where you're like fly birdie fly it's i mean i'm kind of you spend all this time getting them ready for adulthood right and then you feel like they're ready and you know ultimately they're going to be fine but it doesn't like all of a sudden it's like there's a switch that goes off with me where i'm like oh my god this is it like my job is done my role has totally changed from parental to advisory in this moment. You know, it's like from here on out, I'm a consultant, you know? And so for me, it's, I feel like my role has shifted. Whereas I was always the one carrying all three of them to soccer practice on my shoulders, you know? So it's just, I don't know. I get flashbacks. I'm not going to lie. I get a little, you know, they're my kids. They're my daughter's. And uh, I don't show it with them day in and day out, but the big events like kissing them goodbye and not seeing them for a while in a dorm, you know, it sucks. But the thing that helps me right now is that we've chosen to do this and we're going to be more accessible to them, even though they moved away from us, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. We can fly to them more now. Um, And yeah, you're right. We can be more accessible, but I don't know. Going back to the question of why I don't cry, I think... I don't cry because I'm, I said it, I'm tired. And by the time they leave, I'm ready. Like, that's just the truth. It's like, I've done the seven days a week, 24 hours a day with them. And so, um, I'm like, like, seriously, like, like I did my job. So you're ready to go. And I, I, I bid you well. I mean, that's like how I feel. Like when it's like college, it's like I did yeah. everything like to get you to this place. And um, I'm, I've never been a helicopter mom. Uh, we've always raised them to be pretty independent. I was a pretty independent young person. I know the value of that. Uh, I've never wanted to hover. Uh, so maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not sure. Um, I, I, when I look at life and approach life and any task at hand, I try to do my very best. And, um, raising these girls was a big job for me. And I feel like I did my very best. So when I send them off to college, I am for sure going to miss them there. There's absolutely no question about it. I talk to them the next day. I am always texting them. We'll FaceTime, but I prepared myself for this for years. I've prepared them for years. So um, there's no tears for me because to me, it's just like their new chapter. And I'm excited to actually be a part of it with them. I know it's odd because everyone else cries. I know this. And even in my mom's circle, they always ask me, did you cry? And I've lied so many times (laughs) and have said I cried. I had tissues. I've never cried. And um, I don't know. I don't. I know everyone's listening that are my friends and saying I'm cold hearted. It's not that. It's just I worked I worked to get to this point with them. I'm happy. I don't need to cry and be sad. I'm going to see them. Yeah. I don't know. It's I I don't know what it is. Maybe I need to talk to a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you do, but maybe not for that. Um, I don't know, just throwing things out there, but maybe it's just like you feel they're ready, you've known they're ready and uh, I'm ready. The only way the they're truth gonna... is, I'm ready too. Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. I think it's different for dads. And... I mean, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. I think it's different for dads. You guys are just kind of part time, and you and I can go back and forth on this. But you guys are just part time, unless you're a stay at home dad. You're just part time. You're there at dinner time. You might read them a book. You might be there on Saturdays and Sundays, but you're not putting in the hours that we're putting in. Even as like a full time working mom, she is still picking up the kids from soccer, making the dinner, making the lunches. Okay. In our household, you made the lunches and you're the breadwinners. Like there's no, there's no lie about it. Like you're, you're providing the roof over their heads. So you can't be, you can't be there as much as, as we are. And obviously if there's two families in the house working the same amount, making the same amount of money, let's be honest in most households, it still falls on the woman. So look, I don't know. I don't think think that's always true. 
I don't. Okay, we disagree. We will. Was, we will. We will. It was fine. Always disagree it was fine about in this. The beginning, uh, it, but it I just was think like that, that da- in the beginning I think for dads us, but... miss it because let's be honest with what it is. You're crying over all the time that you miss with your kid. Oh, I don't know. I don't. Yeah, we're gonna have to argue about this in a future episode because okay. I I think you're off. All right, I do, and that's fine. I don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're well, a crybaby. Yeah. You're a crybaby. Only when it comes to them. I, I know really you are totally. You're when it comes to them. You're a crybaby. It's fine. I'm a sucker. I really am. They have me all wrapped. They, they all do. three of them have me wrapped. So, but they're good kids. They're and great kids. Thanks to you. Thanks, thanks to all that time you put in while I was out screwing off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway hey babe thanks for raising my kids uh we're gonna wrap up this gotcha. episode <laughs> we're gonna wrap up this episode to be continued i promise we have a special surprise for you we have a bonus episode coming this week uh check it out there's gonna be another one dropping thursday we had a little uh surprise we for did. my lovely wife who raised all my kids <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm not gonna live this one down You're it's not. fine i'm I gonna did. totally use it no, go ahead it's like a thing okay for this episode of skip town all stars you want to take them out empty nest full tank we'll catch you guys next week bye check the mic and make sure it sound right boys